boys and girls. Oh, that's a lot better. I don't know why I was whispering this morning. Welcome back to FKBC Kids Online. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Pastor Daniel. I have the great honor and pleasure of serving each and every one of you as your children's pastor. And I am so happy that we could come together again this week. Week. I am so excited to be with you, and I can't wait for us to jump into God's Word all together. I want to give a special welcome this morning to all of our brand new kindergartners who are joining us. Welcome to the FKBC Kids family. We are going to have so much fun together this semester. So, that being said, boys and girls, I bet you all can guess how we are going to start everything off this week. Yep, I agree. The same way we always start things off, with a time of prayer. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes, and we will go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we acknowledge that you are the creator of all things. We acknowledge that you are the king of the entire universe and that you are in control. We realize that you are worthy of all glory and honor and praise. Father God, you are worthy of us coming together to study your word, to worship you, and to pray. You are worthy of us gathering together for your glory. Father God, we confess our sins this morning. We know your word says that all who call on the name of Jesus will be saved. And so we confess our sins and we call in the name of Jesus to not only forgive us of our sins, but to send your Holy Spirit to help us to go and sin no more. Father God, we thank you for breathing the breath of life into us, for keeping us alive and keeping us and our families safe. Father God, we thank you that no matter how crazy the world might seem, we thank you that we can trust in you that you are in control and we thank you for keeping the promises that you make to us in your word. Father God, we pray for all of our missionaries serving all around the world. We pray especially for the nation of the Philippines this morning. We pray for Freedom in Christ Church and Dismo Community Church. We pray for their pastors, their community, their kids. We ask that you would continue to lead them guide them, strengthen them, and grow them in according to your will. Father God, I ask that you would have your hand on our service today, that you would open the hearts, the minds, the eyes, and the ears of these students to receive your word. So Father God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so boys and girls, today we are on unit 19, session number Four. And you guys know we have a big picture memory verse that we have been doing for all of Unit 19. Do you remember where it comes from? That is correct. Our big picture memory verse comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Boys and girls, say it with me. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Awesome job, boys and girls. And you only have one more week to have that big picture memory verse all the way memorized. But I have a feeling some of you already have it memorized, and I'm so proud of you for that. So boys and girls, as you know with our unit, we have a big picture question that we've been answering for the last four weeks. And the big picture question is this. Is God, I'm sorry, is Jesus God or human? Is Jesus God or human? Do any of you guys remember the answer to our big picture question? Yeah, that's right. Remember, the answer is that as the Son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. And you know, the Bible says that Jesus is equal with God. And like us, you know, people, humans, Jesus experienced hunger and thirst and weariness and sorrow and pain. And, you know, as we keep learning about Jesus, I want you to keep in mind that as the Son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. So, 
boys and girls, in our Bible story today, we are going to hear about Jesus, of course. But we're going to hear about Jesus as he was still a baby. But first, I want to just review what we've learned about Jesus so far. So if you remember from unit one, first, we learned that Jesus' family line proved that he was the Messiah. Remember, we traced Jesus' family all the way back to King David and even all the way back to Adam, and it showed that God kept his promises. And remember, we learned that before Jesus came into the world, John was born. And if you remember, God had a plan for John's life, right? John was born to prepare the way for Jesus. And then, boys and girls, at just the right time, Jesus was born. And do you guys remember why Jesus was born? This is from last week. Why was Jesus born? Well, remember, Jesus was born to be God's promised Savior. And boys and girls, when Jesus was about five weeks old, his earthly parents, Mary and Joseph, they took him to the temple to be dedicated. And that's our Bible story today. Jesus was dedicated. So I hope you enjoy your Bible story for today. Check it out. Mary and Joseph's baby. God's own son, was a few days old when Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, just like the angel had told them to do. When Jesus was a few weeks old, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. Mary and Joseph wanted to obey God and his law. The law that God gave Moses said, when a woman's first son is born, his parents must dedicate him to the Lord. The law also said, that the child's parents should give a sacrifice. At the temple, Mary and Joseph presented Jesus to the Lord and offered two birds as a sacrifice. Another man was at the temple. His name was Simeon. Simeon loved God, and he trusted in God's promise to send a Messiah to save people from sin. God's spirit was with Simeon, And God had told Simeon that he would not die until he saw the one who would rescue people from their sin. That day, God's spirit had led Simeon to the temple. Simeon saw Jesus and picked him up in his arms. God's spirit showed Simeon that Jesus was the promised Messiah. Simeon was so happy. He praised God and said, Lord, you can let me die now. You kept your promise and I have seen the one who will save people from sin. Simeon said that Jesus would save God's people, the Israelites, and Jesus would also save people from other nations. Mary and Joseph were amazed at what Simeon said. Simeon blessed Mary and Joseph. He told Mary that being Jesus' mother would be a very good thing, but it would also be very hard. Some people would love Jesus, but others would hate him. Things were going to happen that would make Mary very sad. A woman named Anna was at the temple too. Anna's husband had died and Anna was very old. She stayed at the temple and worshiped God all the time. Anna came up to Simeon, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and she began to thank God. Anna talked about Jesus to people who were waiting for God to keep his promise to send a savior. She told them the good news. The Savior was here. (laughs) Mary and Joseph finished dedicating Jesus and making sacrifices to God. They obeyed God's law. Then they went back home to Nazareth. Jesus grew up and was strong and healthy. He was wise and God was happy with him. Throughout the Old Testament, God promised the arrival of a king who would redeem people. When Jesus arrived, Simeon and Anna knew he was the promised Messiah. Today, we have faith that Jesus is God's son. We can trust Jesus for our salvation, and like Simeon and Anna, we should share the good news. 
Wow, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed your Bible story video for today. So, as you saw in your Bible story, right, Jesus was still a small baby when Mary and Joseph took him to Jerusalem, right? You see, in God's law, in the, in the law of Moses in the Old Testament, it said that every firstborn male was to be dedicated to the Lord. In fact, we can read that in Exodus chapter 13, verses 2 and verses 12. Let's read that. So Exodus 13, verse 2 says this, Consecrate, consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and beast, is mine. So, he, so God said to set apart the firstborn to him. And then in Exodus 13, verse 12, it says, You shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens in the womb. And so Mary and Joseph, they wanted to obey God's law. So they took Jesus to the temple to be dedicated. Now, we know from our Bible story that Simeon was already at the temple. And do you guys know how, how did Simeon know that Jesus was going to be there? Well, if we look at Luke chapter 2, verses 26 and 27, we can see it says, And it had been revealed to him, that's Simeon, by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. Wow, boys and girls. So it turns out that the Holy Spirit actually led Simeon to the temple. You see, Simeon had been waiting for God to keep his promise to rescue his people from sin. In fact, boys and girls, God had revealed to Simeon that Simeon would see the Messiah in his lifetime. And guess what? That day had finally come, right? Simeon took Jesus into his arms, and remember, what did he do? He praised God. Now, from your Bible story, do you guys remember there was someone else in the temple that day? Do you remember who? Well, if we look in Luke chapter 2, verse 36, it says, And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. Wow, boys and girls. So we learned that Anna had spent most of her life in the temple of God. And we find out that she was serving God, and she was fasting, and she was praying. And guess what? She was over 100 years old. Wow. That's pretty old. I would guess that 100 years old is older than most of your parents. Pastor Daniel, I'm only 27 years old, so that's like four times as old as I am. That's pretty old. So the prophetess Anna was over 100 years old. And remember, Simeon and Anna worshipped Jesus as the Messiah. But not only that, Anna then went out and told other people about Jesus. You know, boys and girls, throughout the Old Testament, God promised the arrival of a king who would redeem his people. And when Jesus finally arrived, Simeon and Anna, they knew that he was the promised Messiah. And so, boys and girls, that leads us to our big Christ connection for today, which is this. You know, today... We have faith that Jesus is God's son. You know, God opens our eyes to the gospel, and we can trust God and Jesus for salvation. Just like Simeon and Anna, we can joyfully share the good news with other people. 
And so, boys and girls, I want to remind you, as I remind you at the end of each and every one of our times together, that our goal as Christians is not to keep the good news and the fact that Jesus was the Messiah to ourselves, but rather the Bible calls us to be like Simeon and to be like Anna and to go out and tell other people the good news of the gospel. I want to encourage you all to remember that you are kids on mission. And so, boys and girls, I want to encourage you to tell people the story of Simeon and Anna and how they recognized that Christ was the Messiah and how in Scripture, once again, it showed that God kept his promises all the way from the beginning of Scripture, all the way through and through. And guess what? God keeps his promises even here and now. You know, Jesus came as the Son of God, both fully God and fully man, and he lived the perfect life, a sinless life. He never made a mistake. But Jesus was punished for our mistakes. And he died on the cross, and he rose again. And when he rose again, he defeated death and sin, and he took all of our mistakes and all of our weaknesses and all of the things that we've ever messed up with, and he took them to the cross. And now we can be forgiven because of Jesus, and now we are adopted into God's family. All we have to do is believe in Jesus. So I want to encourage you, boys and girls, to allow the promises of God that we learn about every single week. Don't let them just be stories that we read about. But I want you to know that these aren't just the stories of people that lived in the past. But these are the stories of God's people. And as Christians, we are God's people. And all of these promises that God has made are also true for us. So we can trust in no matter how crazy the world may seem, no matter how things might be turned completely upside down, we can trust and believe that God is in control and that God is with us to the very end of the age. So that being said, boys and girls, I'm going to say a prayer for us, and then I will see some of you on Wednesday, and the rest of you I will see next week. Let's bow our heads. And close our eyes, and we'll go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. Thank you for sending him to live the perfect life that we could never live and to die the death that we deserve. Father God, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to each of these students just as you sent your spirit to Simeon and Anna and help them to recognize that Jesus is the promised Savior. Jesus is the Messiah. I pray that you would show them that if they trust and believe in Jesus, they can also be a part of your family. So, Father God, I pray that you would continue to open their hearts and their minds and plant your seeds of the gospel in each of their lives, that they may be raised up to be young people with the fear of God and a passion for your gospel. Father God, I pray that you would continue to send your Holy Spirit to comfort us and lead us and guide us along your paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Father God, I pray that as we get closer and closer to the end of the year, that you would continue to point each and every one of us closer and closer to your word. So, Father God, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you for everything you've done, for everything that you're doing in the world here today, and we thank you for all of the incredible promises you have for those who trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, I've had so much fun, and I will see you all next week. <laughs> Bye. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Gavin from Princeton, Kentucky asks, When Jesus comes back, will we recognize him? 
Yeah, Gavin, that's a good question because today's story, we see that two people, Simeon and Anna, were waiting for the birth of Jesus. And when they saw Jesus, they recognized him. And so it, it makes sense to ask this question, especially as we keep reading the rest of the Gospels. And we see that when Jesus came to earth the first time, many people did not recognize him. They did not accept him. Actually, most people did not. So when Jesus returns, it's natural for us to wonder, well, will we know? Will we be like Simeon and Anna, or will we be like other people and just not recognize him? Well, here's the thing. The second coming of Jesus is going to be a little bit different from the first coming. The second coming, it will be apparent. The return of Jesus will be known by the entire world. There will be no question that Jesus has returned, and that's something exciting. And so for those of us who trust in Christ, if we're still alive when Jesus returns, when he returns, we are going to recognize it and it will be a cause of great worship for us. What an event that will be. The world full of unbelievers, though, they will recognize Jesus is coming, but for them it will not be good news because for them Jesus returns in judgment of their sin. And so our hearts should be now to look forward to the return of Jesus for the joy that it will bring us, but also this should cause us to want to share the gospel with our friends so that they too can take the light in return of Jesus as we do. So question back for you, what do you think it will be like when Jesus comes back to earth? Amanda and Brandy are missionaries in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's difficult for many Brazilians to put their faith in Jesus Christ, but the girls are beginning to see God do some amazing things because they are willing to share the gospel with friends in their city. There was this day when I was feeling very down and sad. Then I remembered Amanda and texted her right then. He ended up sending me a text one day and said, I'm upset. I'm not necessarily enjoying the way that my life's going and I want to change. And in that moment, I just put it all out there and said, I'm doing about 500 things with my church today. If you'd like to come along, you're welcome to any of it. And she was like, absolutely. I was so surprised, but she said, absolutely, let's go. Amanda and Brandy began studying the Bible with their friend Amanda, and she began to understand that even though she is a sinner, God loves her. What love that he has demonstrated to her. Like this city is huge, this world is huge, and he cares about the separation of one of his creation. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably not video worthy, but that's crazy. I'm sorry. So the greatest thing ever happened last night. Yeah. <laughs> Our friend Amanda chose to put her faith in Jesus. I know that it's so real. I know that the Holy Spirit is moving in her and it's just amazing to see Amanda in the purest form and you know, just understanding what she has won in Christ and the victory that he has won for her. But now comes like the most exciting part of her knowing relationship with God. And God is gonna use her to bring others to know Him and to, I mean, she has a redemption story. She has a from death to life story. This is a reality that God is saving people and He is pursuing young adults in Sao Paulo and He is not giving